Okay, so I want to talk about a couple of, well, three different distance units before we jump into our activity today. Um, and these are part of the SI units, the International System of Units. Um, there are SI units for basically any quantity you can think of. You're probably familiar with some of them, distance in meters, time in seconds, mass in kilograms. Maybe you're less familiar with temperature in Kelvin, but if you've taken astronomy with me in the past, then you've worked with Kelvin. Um, so units for everything. And so we're gonna focus today on distance units. So the SI unit of distance, of course, is meters, but in astronomy, we more commonly use kilometers. And on Earth in the metric system, we also tend to express distance in kilometers, which is why uh, races are things like 5K or 10K. Um, of course, there are mile races, but um, it's very common to find our distances in kilometers for things on Earth, very convenient unit. Um, but in space, the astronomical unit ends up being a little bit more convenient. So this is uh, defined as the distance between the sun and the Earth. So that's one astronomical unit, a little bit of an Earth-centric situation we've got going here. And one AU is equal to 1.496 times 10 to the eight kilometers. So it's about 150 million kilometers. All right, and then light year is the most useful distance unit so far in the rest of the universe. And this is again uh, defined by the distance that light travels in one year. So light moves at three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And then you multiply that by the seconds in a year. And if you do that thing, you will find that one light year is 9.461 times 10 to the 12 kilometers. I'll give you a table with all these uh, unit conversions in the activity today, but you might make a little um, note for yourself for uh, the purposes of homework and exams. And these are our more common distance units. Uh, we'll talk about one later called the parsec that will add to our useful for universe measurement distance unit. All right, so suppose that we're talking about galaxies, because that's what we do in this class. Which unit do you suppose would be the most appropriate? Yeah, light years are going to be the most appropriate unit. Kilometers are hopelessly small. AUs are pretty small. It's what we use on our solar system. But once we get out into interstellar space, we're way past the limit of usefulness for AU. Um, to be, to give you like a, a real thumb, Pluto's not a planet, but it's what I would consider sort of near the edge of the solar system. I mean, there's still other stuff outside of it, but it's 40 AU from the sun. So if you think about 100 AU is about the extent of our, what we think of as the solar system, um, much larger than that, and it's gonna be an annoying number to work with. So light years are the unit of choice. And um, I wanna just hearken back to what we talked about last week. As we look farther away in space, uh, we're looking back in time because light does take time to reach us. And so when we talk about uh, distance to an object in light years, then that's the uh, distance back in time when it emitted the light that we're seeing today. Okay, so I wanna do a little unit conversion example because there are these different units and sometimes we will need to convert between them. Um, this one won't be so useful, but you'll, the unit of parsec and the unit of light year will come up again and again, and you should be able to convert between those for sure. So let's say that I take my triangulum galaxy and I wanna know how many light years away is that? How old is the light we're seeing from triangulum? Well, the process of unit conversion is pretty simple. You basically just take your unit conversion factor, this one light year equals this many kilometers, and you express it instead as a fraction. We can do this in two different ways that are totally equivalent. I can say that the fraction uh, equals one, right? If I divide my light year over to that side, or if I divide my kilometers over to that side, then either of those would equal one. And so both of these fractions are equal to one and I can multiply any number by one in algebra for free. So I just need to choose the correct version of this fraction and the way I decide which one to choose is by looking at what I'm starting with. And so if I'm starting with a number in kilometers, then I start with the units I know, and I just try to choose a fraction that makes sure that that unit I know 
is canceled out and replaced by the one I want, right? So um, that's what I've done here. And so if I cancel that unit of kilometer and then continue to finish the math in scientific notation, then I'll have my distance in light years. So another example, I'm, this is in the numerator here, 2.723. So I'm gonna take 2.723 divided by the 9.461. And then when I combine my exponents, it's gonna be 19 minus 12, since the 12 here is in the denominator. And if I do this calculation, I get 0.288 times 10 to the seven light years. But notice that my coefficient here is still not between one and 10. So if I bump this decimal over one to the right, then I need to take one away from my exponent. And so I end up with 2.88 times 10 to the six light years. All right, so that's 2.88 million light years, meaning that the triangulum galaxy is light that, this, that we see from it now was emitted 2.88 million years ago. So I went ahead and converted all the numbers. And now you can see when we express numbers in light years, all the exponents are smaller and more convenient. Um, so the LMC and the SMC are less than a million light years away from the Milky Way, whereas Andromeda and its satellites are millions of light years away from the Milky Way. <laughs>